Okay, everyone, so for the doors, right? All doors come with two versions, closed and open. So open, basically, the doors are gonna be in a blueprint. You can click simulation to preview them. You see them open and close, right? This door is not textured. I mean, it's not set up yet, really. It's just straight from import. The script, everything is set up on an event play for all the doors. So a door that's closed is basically the same thing, except it's one-sided to save on triangles. You're not gonna see the other side because the door is never gonna open. All the doors that animate will be open so that you could just click in the viewport, click in simulate and watch them. Now, it's a very basic setup. So if I click on the timeline, right? I see that this timeline length is two seconds. Let's say I wanted to make it faster, right? Let's say I wanted to make the speed of the doors open and close faster, right? I just come into the length. Let's do 0.5. Let's take the last keyframe. The time two instead of two. Let's make it to 0.5. So now if I compile, my compile is already set up to save. Click on the viewport, simulate. It's gonna open much faster, right? So now let's say you picked which door you want to use and you want to actually set up the door so that it works because right now it's on event play so I'm sorry event begin play so when you just start the level it's just going to open up and stay open I'm going to add a box collision and let's name this door opener you can name it whatever you want alright and let's adjust it so that wherever you want the door to be accessible from wherever the character touches, right? Let's do it like that. Make sure you got enough room. Let's make sure that it's in the middle, nice and evenly, right? Okay, and that looks about right. Let's lift this up a little bit. Uh, let's make it a little bigger. Obviously, you can all adjust yours the way you want. Let's scroll down. I'll make sure you are selected your box collision and on event begin overlap I'm gonna click the plus I'm also gonna click the plus on end overlap let's disconnect the event begin play right and on overlap starting oh I had this do once here I'll explain that in one second I did that so when I clicked on the simulate so we're gonna do play and then we're gonna do on the end we want it to reverse which we want the door to close right and this is all set up. So, if I go to my level. So now, what I actually want to do is, I wanna give it a little bit of a delay before the door starts to close from when I walk away from the door. So it's not just instantaneously. So what I actually did was just hold D, I'm sure most of you know that, and then click on the screen. And let's give it a two second delay. I walk away, it's gonna take us two seconds, right? Then it's gonna close. I should be able to interrupt the door too. Yeah, see? Now, if you happen to come across anything that you've received and you can't walk through it or something like that, um, all you have to do is check the collision, right? So if I check my collision to my door frame, it's on project default, right? So you want to set things to use complex collision as simple, right? Save, and close that out. So I should be able to walk through the door now, right? And everything should be good for your character. Now let's do something else just to give you an idea. So I'm going to come to my door frame, right? Because on my door frame, I know that I have these lights, so I'm going to grab my door frame, on this door frame, right, I have this door light material, so right, so let me double click on this, right, it's just the basic material, as you can see, nothing set up, what I actually want to do is, I want to set this up, so that when the door opens, the light turns on, right, so I'm going to plug this into the emissive color, and I'm going to plug this into the multiply. So this is going to be my light strength signal, right? Now, in order for you to be able to actually 
call this from the blueprint, it has to be a scalar parameter, right? I could also just hold S and click there and just do that also and name it, right? You can also just hold one, click anywhere on the screen. I'm actually used to holding one, right? So I'm just gonna convert this to a parameter. We're gonna call this light on, right? And I could just leave that alone. The default's gonna be zero because the door is gonna start off closed. So from the door frame, because the material is part of that door frame, right? Whatever thing you wanna control, just make sure that you're grabbing the mesh. So if it's the left door, right door, anything that it's on. So right now, I'm gonna come off of here and we're gonna set the scalar parameter. Right, set scalar parameter value on materials, right? Uh, this door frame thing came up. You can just delete that or leave it, it'll make a difference. And my scalar parameter was called light on. And we're gonna turn this just for demonstration purposes, make it 50, right? Now this is gonna happen when the door opens. Right? But I also want it to turn off when the door closes. So I'm just gonna dupe this, bring this down over here. Let's bring this back. Let's actually put it after the delay, right? Plug the delay into the reverse, right? I could just plug this into here. And we're gonna make the parameter zero, right? Let's see how that works out. You can actually delete this. So the light should turn on when the door starts to open, right? Light on. Awesome. If I stay here, I'm still inside the box, the door's gonna stay open. I'm in here chilling, right? So now I'm gonna leave the area, right? It's gonna wait the delay. Light's gonna go off, door's gonna close, right? Cool. Right? Now, let's say you actually wanted the light to stay on until the door closed completely, right? Remember, this also applies to any other animation that you're doing where it's triggered by the door being closed or opening, right? So, let's see how we would do that. On this timeline, there's a finished. The thing is, this finished applies to the playing from the beginning and the reversing from the end. But I only want it to um, tell me when it, uh, uh, I'm sorry, tell me when it's finished from the end to tell when the lights go off. If I just put finished, it'll just, when the door's completely open, the light will go off. Let's create a variable, a Boolean, right? This is going to be door open, question mark, because I'm asking a question, right? If you want to have this work from a different blueprint somewhere else, you could just turn this on. It don't really make a difference, right? So I'm actually going to need a get and a set. And I want it to, the default to be open to start off, right? But I want to set it because you might exit, right, the box collision, and that's going to turn it off. So each time you walk through this, you wanna make sure that you're setting it, you know, to turn back on, right? So you wanna always start up, make sure it's set, door open, right? On the event begin. Then we're gonna go into here, cause it's setting it open, right? Now, what I wanna do is, I wanna create a branch on finished, right? And ask the question if the door is open. And let's put this down here. If the door is open, right, true, I can just copy this. If the door's open, right, it can stay lit, right? But, let's bring this up a little higher to be neat. If the door is closed, unfinished, Right, we're gonna turn the light off, right? And we're gonna tell the door that it's closed once we leave after the delay. So, 
let's set the door closed after the delay. Uh, I forgot to plug in a door somewhere, I'm sure, right over here. I mean door frame, right? Okay, so let's see how this works. Uh, okay, so it started to, it went off, right, before the door closed. Let me fix that. Because on re over here, I still have this over here set up from before. So let's disconnect this. And then from here, go straight into the reverse. Because the finished is going to decide when that's off. Right? If I leave. Now it only goes off when the door is closing. I mean when the door is actually finished.